right. Amen. So we're going into the word this morning, and uh, we're going to be in the book of 1 Kings. So if y'all want to go ahead and go there, uh, we'll be in 1 Kings chapter 17. Thank you all so much. 1 Kings 17 this morning. And I'm going to read. It's not, I'm not going to read a lot, but we're going to pray. Um, the Lord loves you so much that he has a word for you. Did y'all hear what I just said? I said that God loves you so much that he sent a word just for you. And one thing I've learned about God, you all, is that he always makes, I told y'all this before, he always makes me live it out before I preach it. And so I got confirmation this morning that this is um, not only a word that's going to give language for what we've been going through, but I believe it's going to just help set you up for this, the last quarter of the year. So we're in 1 Kings chapter 17. Chapter 17, and I'm going to read from verse 2 to verse 7 this morning. Let me know if y'all there. Y'all there? All right, let me know if you're online this morning. If you're there, if you just drop it in the chat and say, I am there. We also have the scriptures on the screen for you. And the word reads like this. It says, then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Leave here, turn eastward and hide in the ravine east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook. I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. Verse 5, so he did what the Lord had told him. He went to the ravine east of the Jordan and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Verse 7, sometime later, the brook dried up. Somebody say, the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you, God, that your word is the true essence of who you are. God, I pray, God, that you would speak to our hearts today. We thank you that this word is already anointed. We thank you that this word is going to go out and it's going to bear fruit. Father, I pray for our hearts. I pray that our hearts will be open and receptive to what it is that you're saying and what it is that you're doing. And as a result of the word that you speak to us today, that we will never be the same. We love you, we honor you, and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we declare this so. Amen. Amen. I'm going to take my time a little bit this morning, all right, because got, we got some work to do. Turn to your neighbor and say, we got some work to do. We got some work to do. Um, as we're getting started, I do want to honor our pastors and our leaders as they are away on a ministry assignment. Will you help me love on Pastor LeBron and Pastor Fanica this morning? Boy, I tell you, they have my whole heart. I'm so grateful for the friend family, the friend Let's, the girls. We miss them today, but we love you, Pastor Fanica and Pastor LeBrian, and we thank you for trusting us today to continue the work that God has called for us to do. We're in 1 Kings 17, you all. And as we're getting started, I was thinking about how I wanted to open up this particular message. You all have not really had the chance to get to know my mom and my dad yet. They haven't really come to the church but my dad is a character. You'll, you'll notice that if you're any around me anytime in my personality, I really get it from my father. My father is the type of father, when I was in college, I was having an event and, and there was a lot of noise going on and I, was, I thought they were cheering for me and I turned around, my daddy was breaking down, doing James Brown, on a split, having a good time. Like he is the life of the party, right? And so as he's getting older, um, I'm, I'm always trying to find ways of how to connect with my parents. And so one of the ways that I connect with my father is by watching movies, right? We watch movies together. But the thing about my father is he'll start the movie with me. I ain't telling nobody business in here. He'll start the movie with me. But halfway through the movie, the man goes to sleep. But not only does he go to sleep, but he wakes back up and acts like he's been watching a movie with me the whole time. Am I talking to anybody in the room? He'll go to sleep and wake up, get him, get him, get him. I'm like, sir, you've been asleep the whole time. You don't even know what's going on. But that's how my daddy is, right? And so I've learned it's something that we laugh about, something that we joke about often. And I always know during the time of the movie, he's getting ready to go to sleep. And once he gets back up, I act like he ain't sleep no more. And so one thing that I love about him, y'all, he loves to watch Western movies. Now, I don't really like them, but he likes them, so I act like I like them. 
But one of the things that my father always says is anytime he sees a character that he loves, he always turns to me and say, Brittany, that's a bad man right there. And so the other night when they came down a couple of weeks ago for Labor Day, we were watching a movie. I had put one on him and he turned over. He said, Brittany, I said, you ain't even got to tell me. That's a bad man right there. Let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all, Elijah was a bad man. Elijah was one of y'all, I think I told y'all this the last time I preached, Elijah was one of those in the Bible that you just really didn't mess with. He was a prophet of his time, but what I love about Elijah was God raised him up, not for a, a good time, not for a time when everything in the land was going right, but God raised up this prophet in Elijah during a real tumultuous time in the history of his people, right? He raised them up when all of the people of God seemed like they were turning astray from from the true and living God. Matter of fact, during the time that Elijah was prophet, they were raising up kings, and many of the kings were, were worshiping idols. They were worshiping a God called Baal. They were doing all of these things. In the midst of that, God says, I'm going to call me a prophet. So he calls this particular prophet, and what I love about this particular prophet is Elijah don't really get no background in the Bible, y'all. Most times in the Bible, anytime God is getting ready to use somebody, he'll give us the background and who their mama was and who their dad was and all of those different things, but that's not what happens in the Bible. In, in 1 uh, Kings 17, we see a quick and fast introduction, and they get straight to the point. The Bible tells us in first number one that Elijah was this man. He was a Tishbite, and he goes into to, to complete the assignment that God had given him to complete. The Bible tells us that Elijah finds himself in a place where not only does he get an assignment from God, y'all, but he gets an assignment that's a hard assignment. This is not just something easy that God calls Elijah to do. Elijah, God tells Elijah, he says, I need you to go to the king of the land, and I need you to pronounce judgment. Now, y'all give me a second because I got to set this up for us, and we're getting ready to go somewhere. Turn to your neighbor and say, we're getting ready to go somewhere. But I got to give you context of where we're getting ready to go. So he raises up a bad man in Elijah, and he says, Elijah, I'm getting ready to take you somewhere. I put a word in your belly, and I need you to go tell the king that I'm getting ready to shut all this down. So he goes, he goes, and he's obedient to what God has told him to do. And I believe in my imagination, I believe he goes up to the king and that he's in this holy boldness that God will often put on us when he calls us to do hard stuff. Y'all do know that anytime God tells you to do something hard, he always mantles you. He always graces you for whatever it is that he's called you to do. That's why when it looks difficult and when it looks hard and when you begin to question God, are you really talking to me? He says, sis, not only am I talking to you, but I'm going to give you everything you need to do what I've called you to do. Now, this message may not be for everybody, but this message is for some people in the room and some people that are turned online to say, I don't know why God anoints me to do hard stuff. Is there anybody else in the room that feels like you don't just get it easy? That feels like you, every time you look around, you got to do what's hard. This word this morning is for the person that said, Brittany, it always seems like it's so hard and God gives me the hard assignment. Sometimes I peek over and look at my neighbor's storm and my neighbor's situation, and it feels like that theirs is a little bit easier than mine. You got to put me in a hard family. You got to put me on a hard job. I got battles that I can't tell nobody about. Has anybody else just questioned yourself recently to say, God, why does it always seem to be so hard? Elijah finds himself where he was having to do something hard, but I believe, I believe you all, I believe that this is why we didn't see Elijah until the 17th chapter. Because anytime God anoints you for something hard, he has to prepare you for it in secret. Oh, oh my God, oh my God. I came to talk to somebody and I'm not, I'm not in my notes yet, but I've been feeling you as I've been preparing for this message. For some of you, you're like, God, when is my time? I've seen people that's not even as anointed and gifted as me. I've seen them be promoted. I've seen their business take off. I've seen what they've done, but God, when is it gonna be my time? But God said, I've been preparing you in secret for a time such as this because I've called you to do what they can't. You got to guard your heart from comparing your storm to somebody else's. You got to guard your heart from comparing the God's timing to your life for 
somebody else's. We don't see him until chapter 17 because I believe God had been preparing him for when he showed up on the scene, he was ready. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but God told me to tell you that he's been preparing you behind closed doors. He's been preparing you, and he said you're getting ready for a display. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? It seems like some doors have been opening and then they shut. It seems like it just when you felt like it was your time, God says, go back. He says, no, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. But God, what about not yet, not yet? Because I'm waiting for a specific time. Because there's a specific assignment that I've anointed you for that can't nobody else do. Y'all sit down. We're just getting started. We're just getting started, but we about to go. Come on, talk to your neighbor and say, we about to go somewhere. We got to go somewhere. We about to go somewhere. So get this, get this, get this. Oh, I feel my help now. Whew, so get this. Stella told me not to wear these shoes, but I said, no, I got to get back to wearing my shoes. So get this, get this. So listen, he goes and he's obedient to God, right? He's obedient to God and he does what God tells him to do. He goes to the king and he said, look here, king. Y'all, he's such a boss. Go read it. Go read it. He said, look, ain't nothing going to ain't no rain coming, ain't nothing happening till I say so. I said, now wait a minute, Elijah. Wait one minute. You got to, you tell the rain when to stop. What's up? Like, he says, ain't nothing. And he says this because, listen, the spiritual context of that time. See, God has a way. Sometimes, y'all, listen to me. When we don't listen to God, he has a way of getting our attention anyway. Oh, I sense, hold on, I'm getting a download. Because I sense that there's some people that are in this room. Hey, bro, hey, sis. I sense that there's some people that's tuning in that God has been trying to speak to you, but you ain't been listening. So, so if, he, if he won't listen one way, he'll send something else so that you will hear what he said. So since they were not listening to him, he said, okay, I'll know what I'll do. I'll send a famine in the land. He sends a famine and he tells the prophet of God, he says, look, tell them it ain't raining until I say so. Now, I think this is interesting. Now, I, I would say it right there, but I got to hurry up. I think this is so interesting, guys. I think this is so interesting because you would have thought, I thought, and y'all let me know y'all's thoughts after church. I would have thought that after Elijah, because it seemed like to me that was the launch of his ministry. Would y'all agree? We haven't seen the man. He just scrolls up on in chapter 17. I would have thought he was going on revival after this. You know what I'm saying, sis? I, I would have thought we was about to go on tour. You boss up like that. And like, God, what are we doing next? Has God ever used you? And you're like, oh, shucks now. I done gave somebody a word and it was true. Okay, God, what are we about to do? Just some of us, God can't trust us. He's like, uh-uh, go sit back down. You ain't ready yet. I gave you one thing to say, and here you go all in the park. Okay, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. That ain't y'all. That's somebody at church. That's somebody at church. So I would have thought that... You know, he would have went on revival. It would have been some conferences. He would have laid some hands, blew some people, fall down. I just would have thought that that would have been what happened next. But it's not what happened next. God used him mightily, right, y'all? And then after God uses him, he tells him, okay, I now need you to leave here. And I'm like, now wait, now, 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 now wait a minute. God, you said this was my time. I done received prophets and prophecies and words, and I done done this thing for you. Can't you see that I'm ready? I was obedient. Come on, anybody ever, God, turned that thing on you after you were obedient? And you're like, okay, wait a minute, time out. I did what you told me to do. And now you're going to tell me to leave the very place where I just did the thing you told me to do? He said, yeah, I need you to leave here. And I'm getting ready to uh, take you in this slow. It was so strange. Because not only did he tell him to leave, but he tells him to go to an unexpected place. Now, I, I, I want to sit with this. I don't want to move too fast because y'all know how I like to do I want you to see yourself in the word, and I want the word to come aloud to you. God, I just was obedient. You just used me powerfully. You tell me to leave the place that I'm in. And you tell me to go to a ravine in the middle of nowhere? 
that doesn't make any sense. Here goes your first point. Just because it doesn't make sense doesn't mean it's not God. Is there, okay, y'all know that this thing gets real personal for me, so I just got to tell you my business as I preach. Is that okay? Is there anybody else that said, God, this season makes no sense? Y'all, I really, I think I was telling my prayer call, I said, I, I feel like I've been on an episode of Pumped. I've been waiting for the man to jump out at any moment. Like, just when I think I can't take no more, here comes something else. And then here comes something else. I've gotten to the point now, I just don't say nothing. I just say, yes, God. Because if I fight it, it ain't going to change in no way. But nothing about this season has made sense. God, I can't figure this out. You told me to go this way, but it seems like this is a setback. Has anybody felt like in this season you've been set back? I've done what you told me to do, and now I got to go backwards? Finds himself in this place, y'all. Oh, my God. And it don't make sense. But God, told, he said, Brittany, tell them that it ain't going to make sense, but it don't mean I'm not in it. Nothing about this point and where Elijah was made sense. For many of you, but this is the thing. You're in a season right now where you have to forfeit your need to understand. I love what Holy Spirit does because every single song that the worship team sung were all songs that were in my message. He said, remind them of the word that says to lean not to your own understanding. For some of you, you've been frustrated because you've been trying to make sense of something that only will make faith. You got to release your need to understand and to be understood in this. Oh, we about to turn up now because for some of you, you can't afford to tell people your business in this season because they're not going to get it. I don't know about y'all. I ain't got many friends, but I got a couple of them. Yeah. I'm going through some stuff, y'all. Like, I'm going through some stuff, but don't worry. I'm going to give y'all the testimony once it come out. And... You know, I'm going through it, and I'm like, okay, well, let me call this friend. And God was like, okay, I ain't tell you to call him, but call him anyway so you can get disappointed. I started talking. They don't understand because they're giving me their perspective from where they sit. It ain't that they don't love me. They're just not where I am, so they can't understand. You can't be afraid to go through a season where you're misunderstood. I don't know what God is doing, so how can I tell you? All I know is I got to trust them where I am. Who am I talking to? You need to forgive some people. It's not that they don't love you. They just aren't where you are. They're just not at the level that you're on. And they're not going to be able to understand what God is doing in your life. You got to release your need to understand and release your need to be understood. You got to be willing to look crazy. Oh, my. Could it be? That God hasn't changed the season yet because he's trying to get you to release the perception of who you are. Some of you are more married to what you look like when you go through than actually going through and getting what you need. But do I have about 100 people in this room that say, I'll look crazy, I'll look like a fool, I'll look however you need me to look to do what God has called me to do. I've got to the place in my life that I don't have nothing to prove to nobody. I got to do what God has told me to do. Whether you like it or you don't, I have to obey. You are not going to walk out your purpose and be understood, baby. They ain't going to get it. Oh, wait. And I'm sorry to let you know, but some of the people that are going to misunderstand you the most are the people with your last name. Let me pray into this. Father, deliver us from the need to be understood by those that we come from. God, you call us to do something that we ain't never done before. You're breaking generational curses through our yes. We got to be the ones that are willing to go where our mamas didn't go. We got to be the ones to do what our daddies were too afraid to do. God, I'll be misunderstood. I'll be misunderstood. I'll be misunderstood. If it's for your glory, I'll be misunderstood. I'll be misunderstood. I'll be talked about. 
I'll be, I'll be ridiculed if that's what it takes. Well, who she thinks she is. Who do I am a child of God? And that's all you need to know. Y'all sit down. We got to get through this. I don't want pastor to get back and y'all tell on me. So please. I feel the power of God. God wants to free you. He wants to free you. He wants to free you. Got to understand your moves. I prophesy that you won't explain another move that you make in your life. I prophesy that the fear of man is breaking off of you now in the name of Jesus. The fear of man must bow in Jesus' name. Okay, y'all, have a seat, please, 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 please. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm going to give you about 20 seconds right there to lift up a shout. Lift up a... Lift up a shout. God, I'm not leaving out of here. Bow by the same thing that I was before I got here. I'll be misunderstood. I'll be misunderstood. Oh, Jesus. Elijah, 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 Elijah. I'm almost done. <laughs> Elijah, stay right there. Let's walk through it together. So listen, y'all. I'm finishing this up, and we're getting ready to pray. So he gets to this brook, y'all, and it doesn't make any sense, right? It doesn't make sense. He gets there, and he's all by himself. Now that goes right into the revelation y'all just called. Because, I, 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 oh, y'all, this is not an easy word. Some of you have been praying for relationships that God is not going to send yet. He's not, he, he's not going to send everything right now, right? I was telling the Lord the other day, I said, God, sometimes I feel so alone. Has anybody been there? Sometimes it's like I, try to, I can't even talk to certain people because they don't sit in the seat that I sit in. And sometimes I feel so alone, and I go to him complaining and all that. He said, yeah. He said, Brittany, tell. This is what he told me I wanted to give to you. He said, what you think is isolation is actually an invitation. He said, what you've been diagnosing is me isolating you. I've been trying to invite you into another place with me. But some of you all, he's allowed you to be by yourself for a season for a reason. He's saying there's some things he had to get. Elijah didn't go to this brook by him alone. Yeah, he went to this brook by himself. Because God said there's some stuff I'm trying to do in you. And if you'll stop focusing on what you don't have, if you'll start fo stop focusing on who left, if you stop focusing on what, it, what you thought you were supposed to be at 30, and what you thought your life was supposed to look like at 40, and what you thought, come on, who am I talking to who needs to lay their timeline on the altar? Who am I preaching to to say, God, I didn't think it was going to look like this when I was here, but God says I got you in this place for a reason. So he finds himself in this place, y'all. And it's so interesting because the Bible says, that God tells him, I'm getting ready to provide for you, but it's not going to come the way you expected it. I'm going to send some ravens to feed you. I'm reminded of a scripture that says, he'll take the foolish things to confine the wise. God is getting ready to use something foolish to bless you. He's getting ready to use something foolish to put you in your next place with him. He uses these ravens to feed them. And we're going to get right to where we need to be, and I'm getting ready to pray for you. The Bible says, y'all, that Elijah gets to the place that's unexpected, and he stays there. And this is important because we just sung this song. For some of us, you all, you've been trying to move too quick. And that's why you're frustrated. Because you're getting ahead of God. Get this, get this. I want you to see it in the text. I want you to see it in the text, Isaiah. 
Elijah went to a place that God didn't ask him to go. But he stayed there until God spoke again. You don't move until he speaks again. You continue the last word until he gives you a new word. If he's not, who, who said, God, you're not speaking? God, where I'm supposed to go? God, what I'm supposed to do? You do the last thing until I give you a fresh word of the new thing. So get this, he stays there. Many of you got to get in a place where you stop moving so much. Every time something comes, here you go. Every time it don't look like, here you go. God is saying, I'm trying to mature you to a place that regardless of what happens, regardless of what comes, you won't move. So he stays there, he stays there, he stays there. And get this, you all, because this I saw myself in this. Let me, let me know if y'all see y'all self in this. He didn't ask to go. He finally accepts that that's where God had called him. And as soon as he accepts it, God says, now the brook is dried up. Have you ever been in a place, I'm getting ready to share a testimony with you, but have you ever been in a place where you're like, God, I just got comfortable. Like, I just, I, I just got to the place where I'm not wrestling as much with my call. Like, I, I just got into the place that, okay, you want me to drive to that church. Like, every, okay, I just got to that place, and now you're calling me to do something else. Now you got, and this is where Elijah was. The Bible says that once he got settled and he got used to the unusual provision, God says, okay, now it's time to go. And the brook dries up. And I'm like, God, why would you let this brook dry? no deep revelations, but I'm about to bring it to your house. He said, because I've called you to more. He said, tell them that I've anointed them to go from good to great. Get this, get this, get this, get this, get this, and we're getting ready to pray. God was providing for Elijah in a famine. He was receiving provision when other people were not. It was, it was, I'm pretty sure that other people would have looked at his situation and said, oh, he got it good. God provided for him. He ain't got to complain. Has anybody ever said that about your life? You ain't got, you try to tell them where you are, and they tell you, well, you ain't got nothing to complain about. You got this going, you got that going, you got that going. But the Bible says, but I'm so thankful that God says, yeah, what you've experienced has been good. But there's another level I'm taking you to. He said, tell my sons and daughters, I love them too much to let them settle for where they've been. You've been experiencing the warfare and the tussle, because y'all know we like to tussle, and you've been experiencing all of that because God says you can't stay in this place when I've called you higher. Many of you have tried to settle because you're getting the revelation that I got, too much is given, much is required. And you're like, God, I don't want to fully step into all of that because I know what that's going to require of me. Who am I talking to? I, God, I don't want to own all of that. I'll, I'll dabble a little bit. I'll be a greeter, but God, I ain't trying to get nobody to see me for real. I still want to hide. God took him through a season of hiding, but then he let him know your season of hiding is over. I come to tell Belong Church that your season of hiding is over. Time to come out of hiding, people of God. The kingdom has need of you. You've been through too much, woman of God, to sit on your testimony. You ain't survived what you survived. You don't have the oil that you have just for you to go home and keep it to yourself. He said, I call them. I know what you've experienced, and I know that place has gotten comfortable. That's why I've been shaking some stuff. That's why what used to feel okay don't feel okay no more. Who am I talking to? Oh, you like, wait, this place, I used to be cool here. But something about this place don't seem like this where I'm supposed to be anymore. I'm going to tell you a testimony. I'm getting ready to pray for you. Three years ago, I, I, if you don't know, I moved to Atlanta to help with the church. And um, if you don't know my background, I've been leading a ministry for the last 11 years. And so I've been knowing the friends and, you know, all of that. And so three years ago, I was in Huntsville, Alabama, 
and I was serving my leaders. I was at an event, and I was serving my pastors. It was a Friday night, no, Saturday night. I went to an old small Kojic church. They had a little program down the street from the church, and I was there serving my leaders because that's, that's what you do, right? And so I get in, and I'm helping to set up the tables and helping to set everything up. And this man of God that I'm very familiar with, been knowing him for years, we went to the same college, he said, Brittany, I need to see you before the end of the service. And I did not want to see this man. I didn't want no word from God. Had anybody ever been there? I didn't know if this man was about to tell my business. Now, I was living holy, but I didn't know what he was about to say. So I avoided the man. Anybody ever avoided the people? Okay. So I avoided him, right? So I said, surely if I hide, he won't see me before the end of the service. And so I didn't go to him. He came to me. He said, hey, remember I told you that I had a word for you before you left? I said, doggone it. I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. He said, um, what are you doing here? what do you mean what I'm doing here? I'm serving. Like, duh, you know, I'm at the church, like, I'm serving. He said, no, 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 no. What are you doing here? And I said, I'm doing what I believe I'm supposed to be doing. Y'all, fear began to creep in my heart because the last thing I want to ever do is be outside the will of God. And I said, now, 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 I said, now, I'm, I'm serving. I'm at church. I'm doing ministry. I just got my little real estate license. You know, I'm running. He said, no, 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 no. What are you doing here? He said, Brittany, there comes a time where you can outgrow the place that you're still trying to fit in. Y'all, fear began to grip my heart, and I'm just shaking my little legs. Just as, I'm like, what is this man about to say? He didn't give me too many other words. He said, don't be surprised or afraid of the next thing that God is getting ready to tell you to do. Y'all, I went back home off. Afraid, okay? Because I'm like, God, now what, what does that mean? Like, I didn't want, I didn't want to be here, but you sent me here. I just got comfortable here. So what in the world are you telling me to do now? I didn't ask for this, Pastor Stella, but I came. What are you saying? Months kept going by. I kept getting words. Transition. Move. This. I'm like, this don't make no sense, God. I got an office I'm getting ready to sign a lease for. I got people I'm getting ready to bring on, and you're I, it does not make sense. Fast forward, COVID hits. I'm settled. I'm comfortable. I've been in the same place for 10 years. And God's saying, now it's time. The brook is dried up. And I'm like, the brook is dried up? Because get this, God, the brook dried up before God gave Elijah his next instruction. I need you to catch that. Because he's not going to always speak before. Sometimes he'll let the door shut first. And then as you wait, honor you waiting, and then give you your next instruction. Oh, wait a minute. I got to pause right here. Because for some of you, you're standing in the middle of a shut door, and your next door ain't open yet. And you're like, God, what in the world is happening? And God has said, I'm trying to check your posture in the midst of a shut door before the next door opens. My brook dries up in a season where I have experienced overflow. My brook, Jamie, dries up in a place where I have spent my life building a people. And now you're telling me I got to leave and I don't know where I'm going. Has anybody ever got a word and you're like, God, I don't even know what to do with this word. So March comes and I do a... Uh, a prayer, seven days of prayer when COVID happened. And I'm praying and I'm praying for families and children and entrepreneurs and God is just moving. And I'm like, okay, I hear you, God, but where do I go? He made me wait from March to July before he gave me my next instruction. But it was during that time he was preparing my heart. Could it be that he's preparing your heart? Could it be, for, for those of you that's been frustrated, he's been working on your heart, so then when he releases the next, you won't resist it. Sometimes, for some of you, God is letting you get to the end of yourself for a reason. He's letting things dry up in your life. Oh, yeah, for a reason. Because he says once I get him to that place where he comes to the end of himself, he's now going to be ready for me to release his next. So then... 
by July came, I was desperate. I'm in a place that I don't feel like I'm supposed to be. I'm leading people in the midst of that, and I don't know what's next. So July comes, and I said, I'm going on a fast. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't explain it to anybody because nobody would have understood. And I said, I'm going on a fast. Two weeks into my fast, I get a phone call from Pastor LeBryant. I had not talked. Every time I had tried to talk to Pastor LeBryant and Pastor Fanica about what I was, God shut the door. Because he wanted to do this thing. And so he calls. He says, hey, keep in mind, I have not had a conversation with him. The first thing out of his mouth, he says, are you ready to move? How would he know the place I was in if God wasn't working in me and working in Atlanta, Georgia all at the same time? Can I tell you that God is working on your behalf right now? Don't buy into the lie of the enemy that you're forgotten, man of God. He's working on your behalf, and at the right time, he's going to bring that thing to pass. I just laughed. Sitting in my car in Arby's parking lot, y'all, I just, I said, really, God? All this time it was Atlanta. <laughs> and in two weeks, I'm transitioned my whole life because a brook had dried up. Now, get this. I'm getting ready to pray for you. Me being obedient to God and moving was not easy. Matter of fact, you all, it's been the, one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. I didn't know that you could grieve seasons. I only thought you could grieve people. I moved here, and every single day I'm driving home crying about what I left behind. What I come to tell somebody is, your great is going to cost you your good. Your great is going to cost you your good. It's going to be painful for you to walk away from a brook. It's going to be painful for you to say, God, I trust you when I thought this is where I was going to always be cried every day, y'all, because back there was my comfort zone. I had a hard time trusting people. I didn't want to build no more relationships. Those were my people back there, God. I knew how to move there. I knew what to expect there. And now you've called me to a new place where I got to trust you in a new way because the brook dried up. Went back there this week. Driving around the city, it only takes me about 15 minutes to get around the whole city. Not like Atlanta. And I'm, my heart is better now. I didn't cry, but it's still something I'm being processed from. God said, yeah, I've called you to this, but I've called you to a whole lot more. Will you stand with me this morning? I come to tell somebody, I pray that this has encouraged a heart. I come to tell somebody that as I said before, God loves you too much to keep you at the place that you've been at. I know for some of you, it's been hard. For some of you, it ain't made no sense. For some of you, you've been wrestling. For some of you, you've been fighting in your mind. For some of you, you've been fighting in your emotions. But God said, yeah, because there's more I've called you to. There's more anointing that's on your life. There's more ministry that I have for you. I know that you've been disappointed. I know that your heart has been broken. I know that the last time you tried it, that thing didn't seem like it worked. I know that you don't know this new place, but there's more, 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 there's more that I have for you to do. Elijah had to move because there was a widow that was waiting for him. There was a miracle that he had to perform. There was more that he had to do. You want to know why that accident didn't take you out? You want to know why that suicide attempt didn't take you out? Because there's still purpose on your life. There's still a call on your life. There's still souls that God has called you to reach. God is not done with you. I said God is not done with you. That's why you're still here. I said, God is not done with you. That's why you survived what you survived. There's more on the other side. So today I prophesy that this will be the last time you cry over a brook that is dried up. Your destiny is waiting for you. I said, your destiny, if you will lift up your head and say, God, I thank you for what this season was. I honor you for everything I learned here. I thank you.
you for what I gave here, but I got to get my stuff and move forward because you're calling me to my next. I believe by faith today that we're not going to try to force nothing that God has stopped and God has closed. God closed the door, let him. God said it's time to move to what's next, move. And you got to learn to trust him as you go. He's not going to give you all the details. He's not going to show you the whole plan. You know why? Because he doesn't want anything in your life being God but him. If he gave it to you too fast, you will worship that and not worship him. So that's why he has to prescribe you to processes. Do you hear what I'm telling you? You're right where you're supposed to be. But some of you keep going back to some stuff that he closed. And he said, today, no more. And I believe by the Spirit of God that if you will lean into this word and you would do and obey what God is telling you to do, what you thought was going to be hard, I prophesy that there's going to be a grace on that thing, that there's going to be a grace on you for transition. When I, t I told y'all this testimony before, I left a house. I left a ministry. I left a people. I cried my eyes out for two years. On the other side of the grief and on the other side of a brook, not do I have, I don't just have one house now, but I have two. I don't just lead one ministry, but I lead two. God says, I'm going to give you double if you trust me. I would have never known that God had this on the other side of a brook because I was comfortable. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for this word. We thank you, God that you ordained for us to be in this service today. God, I thank you for what you've released over your people. And I pray today, God, for every heart, God, under the sound of my voice. I pray today, God, that you would give your sons and daughters courage to walk away and do what you've called them to do. I pray, God, that you would give them the holy boldness to look at that brook and say, God, I don't know what you're doing next, but I'm going to trust you. I pray, God, that your people, God, will obey your voice today and do what it is you called them to do. We lay our need to understand at the altar. We lay our need to be be understood at the altar and today we declare that God we're gonna trust you we're gonna trust you when it's good we're gonna trust you when it's bad we're gonna trust you when doors open up and we're gonna trust you when they close we're gonna trust you when you say move forward and we're gonna trust you when you say be still why because you're taking us from good to great you're taking us from good to great come on will you talk to